It's still standing up. I don't get it. Wait, what? <laughs> oh no! Welcome to History Legends, and in this video, we'll do a step by step analysis of the famous Battle of Carentan as depicted in the fan favorite Band of Brothers. This show is sacred and it's my favorite World War II series ever done. Episode 3, which covers the Battle of Carentan, is one of the best episodes in the series. But how does it actually hold up to actual events? That's what you'll discover in this video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, support me on Patreon, and check out my unique veterans book with tons of World War II stories, a link in the bio. Check this out, I'm so impressed at how they recreated this city from Normandy. We call this place today the Y Corner because as you can see on the map, there were two roads converging into one forming the letter Y. And that corner was defended by some Germans. It might seem obvious for some of you, but he means second and third platoons. What is not shown in the episode is that the entire morning, First Lieutenant Winters as acting company commander went back and forth with headquarters, and he didn't have time to recon the area before the assault. So basically the plan is that first platoon has to rush the white corner and then second and third platoon follow up. Before we continue, it's important for you to understand that Easy Company was one of three companies of the 506 to attack the south of Carentan. They sneaked in during the night and encircled the city. And on top of that, glider companies attacked from the north. Now this attack was launched at 6 a.m. Thing is, the paratroopers only reached the hill behind Carentan at 2 a.m. So there's something we can't really see here, but the men from Easy Company must have been exhausted as they didn't get much sleep. So that's First Lieutenant uh, Welsh. Well done. <laughs> Band of Brothers is great because as you can see, it can mix action, character building and comic relief at the same time. And the balance is very pleasing. But I want to point out why he's asking where everybody went. In the actual battle, only six men from 1st platoon kept moving while all the others took cover and hit the dirt. All of Easy Company was effectively pinned down. But the crazy thing is that Winters and his men were allegedly 400 meters away from the machine gun. Imagine having to run 400 meters straight into enemy fire and there's no way around it. And the actual maneuver is pretty much the same as in the series. At first they moved up the slope and then down in a straight line into the town. And what I like in the show is this particular scene. All the soldiers take cover. Excellent, very realistic. And this is pretty much what actually happened. The soldiers really didn't want to get hacked down. Now, the other thing I, I want to point out is the following. One, two, three. You see the Germans have three firing positions from that house. At first, here you have a machine gun on the first floor of the house. Here you can see that there are two shooters on the second floor with what I believe to be MP40 from the sound of it. I'm not a weapons expert, so let me know what weapons they're using. The point I want to make is that in reality, there was only one machine gun on the first floor of that building. But of course, it looks less epic to know that maybe two Germans with a machine gun held off an entire company. Actually, it's not even one company, it's even worse. Check out this map. We can clearly see how Fox, Easy, and Dark Company converge towards that one machine gun. Thing is, at first, the Americans thought they were facing an entire regiment of German Fallschirmjägers, paratroopers. 
but make sure to watch until the end to really understand the balance of power during the bow of carrying 10. Excellent. Yes! Very good. Every paratrooper platoon was equipped with two Browning machine guns and one 60mm mortar. But I don't think that in the scene we see the actual mortar in action. I don't know why. Maybe they didn't have it, but it's not there. Very realistic. One of my favorite scenes. In all honesty, I think this is one of the best scenes in World War II cinema history. Now the situation is that Easy Company was pinned down. Lieutenant Winters was known to be a calm man, but on that day he did yell and kick his men and he did insult them to keep moving. He knew that German mortars could zero them out fast if they didn't move. Many paratroopers looked up at him and in fear started digging the ground. And during this time, just like in the series, Winters exposed himself to enemy fire. Reports mentioned that Winters went back and forth the road trying to motivate his men to keep moving, kicking his men out of that ditch. And everyone said that he was lucky not to have been shot. Eventually, we don't know after how much time, one of his squad leaders was so ashamed that he finally stood up and moved on. And this triggered a mass effect where everyone started moving forward. So, very realistic. They're firing back. They're moving fast. This is perfect. They're moving as if their life is in danger. And it's true. They're running, kicking doors. Beautiful. So in reality, the guys you just saw here were not from Easy Company, but belonged to Fox Company. As a reminder, Fox advanced along another road north of Easy Company. However, they did not face machine gun fire, but a sniper, which is properly portrayed in the scene. The German sniper was actually isolated outside the town, but in the episode, he's next to the machine gun house. As you can see, this event was simplified for the audience, both in scale and in time. So just imagine three companies, so about 200 men, facing that one German machine gun. Let's keep moving. Very good. I love the way they move. They hide along the wall. Very realistic. Quick word about this maneuver. So we'll just look at it again. First of all, you have one guy here right away covering one axis of the crossroad. You have the other guys moving quickly, trying to be as small as possible, not to be any target. Very good. Now they take every corner, they look to make sure that there's no Germans around. And here, in the end, instead of standing in the middle of the road, like you see in 99% of war movies, where the attackers just blindly walk in the line in the middle of the road as easy target. So right here, you can see they're crouched along the wall, trying to be as small of a target as they can. And as a side note, I think these men are supposed to reenact the assault from Dog Company. Dog Company walked up this road and appeared on the left of the German machine gun. And here we can see that this group is on the left from this machine gun house. Oh, usually in movies when a soldier throws a grenade, it always lands where he wants it to land. But in this scene, not only does he miss, but the grenade bounces back towards his comrades. <laughs> oh my god, this is so silly! Okay, snipers have two perks. 
range and concealment. Not only is he not concealed in any way apart from these wooden boxes, but the Americans are literally in front of his face. Like, can he not pull back and pick another spot? Because I think his position now is fully exposed. Oh yeah, and the other thing I wanted to show is that most of the time in movies, when soldiers get hit, they die instantly. Typical video game stuff. But in reality, most of them were wounded. They'd be crawling around or asking their friends for help. So I think this is what Band of Brothers could have shown in this situation where this guy here is stuck and you have two of his friends that ask him for help, but he knows if he helps them, he will get shot as well. So I think they missed a brilliant opportunity to add uh, something like that. Covering fire, that's good. Okay, okay, you have an American soldier, a grenade, and an explosion. This is almost what actually happened. So the two men you see here represent the six men from 1st platoon that got separated from Easy Company when it got pinned down. The crazy thing is that while the MG was targeting Lieutenant Winters, Lieutenant Welch and his five men basically did all the job by themselves. They fired two rifle grenades into the MG building and neutralized the target opening the way for all three paratrooper companies. And it's interesting because I read a study that explained how during combat in battles about 5% of soldiers did the heavy lifting and especially 1% of them. And I think this scene is a good depiction of this idea. Okay, orders, hierarchy, I love it. They move fast, they're fit, very good. <laughs> What? I don't know what that German soldier was expecting by running out in the middle of the street full of Americans. Although they're in the middle of combat, I would have loved them react to this soldier that just fell in front of their eyes. Because the average age of German paratroopers at Carentan was about 17 and a half years old. But in episode 3, you'll notice how most Germans all look much older. Maybe to make the audience understand that these were hardcore experienced veterans in comparison to the guys of Easy Company. But in the book, the men from Easy Company, who were in their early 20s, were all shocked by how young the Germans they were fighting were. Okay, he's hiding. Taking cover, very good. Giving an order. Oh, this scene. Very good. During the actual battle, once American troops entered Carrington, they fired at every window as a preemptive measure against snipers. Because by the time they destroyed that first MG position, American troops realized they faced only a German rear guard and that their main threat would be isolated snipers and machine guns. I stopped at this scene, but before we continue, I want to point out this specific part. It's a very nice touch and I'm so glad they added it. It's because the night before the assault, howitzers, aircraft, and even warships massively bombarded the city and caused significant damage to the town. Oh, okay, in this case, there were Germans in that building, but just like with the windows as a preemptive measure, American paratroopers at Carrington often threw grenades into random houses, especially before entering. You see, in this episode, you see them constantly running around hectically. But according to the accounts of the survivors, since the fighting had by now kind of died down, the American paratroopers simply walked along the walls. One of my favorite scenes. Look at that. I surrender. Oh, he shot him! The sad thing is that this actually happened, but it did towards the end of the battle. For you to get a picture of the timeline, the attack started at 6 a.m. By 7.30, they had reached the center of Carentan and linked up with the glider regiments that attacked from the north. Now, one group of Germans refused to surrender and barricaded themselves into a building. The Americans had been fighting for a while, and this position was like a thorn in their foot, and they got fed up. Eventually, unable to approach the building, they fired a bazooka round straight into the wall. And this is when a German soldier came out trying to surrender. And an angry American simply shot him. 
And sadly, this is not an isolated case for World War II. You see, they all go along the walls. Very good. Get the hell out of the street, yeah. During actual events, the paratroopers were told to either go into buildings or lay down on the ground, which makes a lot of sense because anyone standing, whether he's close to a wall, running or just standing there, would become a casualty from a mortar round if it hit nearby. But I want you to keep in mind that this artillery strike, so the mortars, did not happen at the entrance of the village, but when they were ready well inside the town. That means that German mortars were not that accurate and the uh, shelling was quite sporadic. It's still standing up, I don't get it. Wait, what? <laughs> oh no! Every time I watch this scene, <laughs> my brain just goes nuts. I mean, look at the range they're firing from. It's literally at point blank. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Even as a kid, first time watching this, I knew this did not make sense. The Pac-36 is clearly an anti-tank weapon. It's as if in the series now, you have guys running around with bazookas, it firing at random guys running around in a field. Like it's so silly and ridiculous. And that's not even the worst part, check this out. If we look closely, we see that the Germans have weapons. Why don't they use their damn weapons to fire at the Americans that are just running in front of them? I'll never understand this. In reality, Lipton was hit by a mortar round and this makes much more sense. So the crazy thing is that the chaplain part is actually legit and most importantly the men he went to see were still alive, not dead like in the show. So they were simply wounded. So this part represents when they're inside Carentan and they're clearing the, the remaining German strongholds. But you see the fighting never stops, everybody's running around, there's a huge battle but like I said the, the guys were simply walking around and they were only Wait, wait for it. There were only 100 German soldiers in that entire town against hundreds of Americans. And after reading what really happened, I realized Benoff Brothers fooled me into thinking that the Battle of Carentan was a massive event, that this is where the Battle of Normandy took place. But you know how many guys Easy Company lost at Carentan? Zero. Zero. Zero killed and eight wounded. Actually, I did some more digging and the entire second battalion, that means Fox, Easy and Dog companies together, lost three KIA that day. It's not to say that their casualties were not important. It's just that the big battle happened on June 10th and 11th when the third battalion of the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment fought across the causeways leading up to Carentan in the face of intense enemy fire. On its own, the battalion managed to push through, but it lost 67% of its original strength, or 118 men. And I say bravo to Steven Spielberg for turning this forgotten rearguard action into the centerpiece of the Battle of Normandy. Again, that cannon! Oh my god! Wow, they're not even aiming and <laughs> aimbot, aimbot, they're not even aiming <laughs> and all the Germans are falling like flies. <laughs> oh my god, the Germans are literally dumb NPCs because obviously the Germans have no knowledge of simple tactics and they have not a single machine gun covering the retreat. But again, this event is loosely, but still inspired by actual events. 
You see, in the book, they actually mention two Americans firing at Germans that were retreating. But that's it. It doesn't mention that they killed them all. It doesn't mention they hit any either. It was simply two American soldiers clearing a house and they turn a corner, look through the window and see a bunch of Germans running across a hill. Like the Americans were actually shocked to see the Germans right in front of their eyes. They fired two rifle grenades in that direction and simply left. And again, I think that this scene would have been very interesting in terms of how soldiers actually behaved in combat, but they needed that kind of successful ending to the battle. In my opinion, the Battle of Carantan, as depicted in Ben of Brothers, starts off very well. I love the beginning, but then slowly, as time passes by, becomes less realistic. Visually speaking, it's amazing. We fully get immersed into the battle, and I love that. Most events from this episode are, in one shape or another, historically accurate. Spielberg made a list of the most important events and shoved them all into a 12-minute segment. But at the same time, I can't blame him. They have budget and time constraints, and they need to keep the audience hooked. Like, I don't expect them to show six hours of paratroopers clearing entire Carrington house by house with sporadic sniper rifle here and there. Other than some inconsistencies and ridiculous moments, I find this episode and this battle in particular very realistic, and I'm very happy it was portrayed. It's not the biggest battle of Normandy, but it's the battle as the man witnessed it. And as you can see in my veteran book, any battle a veteran takes part in is a massive battle for him. 